Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And in today's video, we're going to be filling out a 2024 election map between Donald Trump and Joe Biden based on the poly market forecasts and what people bet their money on. But before we get started on today's video, please like subscribe and comment down all your suggestions in the section below. Please press that bell next to that subscribe button so you know when I post another video. But without further ado, let's get started on this. And to do this, you know, first we're going to analyze the the national vote, who's going to win the presidency in general. And right now it says here that Donald Trump has a 64% chance to win. Biden has a 22%. And all these other candidates have like really small percentages. And since the debate, and I wanted to do this after the debate to see what would happen. And I waited a couple days to let it balance out a little bit. And we can see that Trump gained a little bit and Biden especially, you know, dropped off a lot as we can see here. Trump had already been gaining like a steady rise and Biden had just been falling off for these third party candidates can really, uh, you know, rise a little bit. I still think Biden's going to stay in. But as we can see here, there is some speculation that Biden will not even last to this presidency, will not even be the nominee. But you know, we're just gonna have to wait and see and right now biden does still have a 32 percent chance of losing the presidency trump's jail time before has gone down a lot biden is actually not favored to win the popular vote and um yeah i mean these are some of the more factors like the presidency again we went over this the senate is favored to republicans and now the house is even favored to republicans before it was the democrats and it says there's about a one in two chance that republicans do sweep all of these three which does which does make sense and then we got the republican vp nominee and bergam vance and carlson are at sorry Bergen, Vance, and Carson are all at the top with Ramaswamy and Scott down below. Rubio, surprisingly, that much lower. I did not think that, even though he kind of made that short list, and Ramaswamy and Carson did not make that short list. But anyways, now we're going to get to this, and we're going to fill out the map. Now, the way we're going to do this is each state has a percentage chance of going one way or another. For example, Wyoming, a 98% chance for Republicans, 2% chance for uh, Democrats, and then Colorado, 91% chance for Democrats, uh nine percent chance for republicans so the way we're going to be doing this is the safe column which is the darkest column will be going to states that have an 80 percent chance or higher of going for that party the likely column will be 70 percent chance or higher the lean column will be 60 percent chance or higher and the tilt column will be everything under that so that will end up being our metric and we're going to see how this map ends up looking out at the end we're going to be starting with the democrat safe states 80% chance of winning or higher and these are going to be no surprise at all for both sides for democrats first of all we're going to have the states of washington oregon and california which will all easily be going into that safe column we're going to be adding the state of hawaii and colorado also that column colorado has been really solidified in that democrat column and it seems to be carrying out right now as do what do people believe and then next we're going to be going over to the state of illinois the only state really in the center of the country uh, besides colorado that has the strongest tendency to vote democrat a lot of these other states are either very republican or a lot closer on this map going over now to the east coast we're going to have the states of maryland delaware New Jersey, New York, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, and Vermont. And let me just point out, it is pretty surprising that New Jersey is only at 86% chance of going for the Democrats and also Maine's first district. So we're going to be filling out all these states up here in the Democrat column. And the Democrats will start out with 191 electoral votes on this map. And now we're going to go over the Republicans. And they will get a large slew of states as well. We're going to start off with Alaska all the way down here, which is at 93 cents. And then next, we're going to go down to the state of Utah, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, North Dakota, South Dakota, all of Nebraska except the second, Kansas, and Oklahoma. So all of these states over here easily, easily will vote for Donald Trump. And the betting markets agree with that as well. Next, we're going to add the state of Texas, which is, has a 90 to 10 percent chance of voting for Donald Trump. So this will be going in that safe column for the Republicans, as well as Idaho, uh, sorry, Iowa, Ohio, Indiana, Missouri, Kentucky, West Virginia, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, 
North Carolina, and Florida. So a complete domination of Republicans along the South and Midwest of the United States. And we can see here how safe, how confident people think that, you know, not only will Iowa and Ohio be in that safe column, but Georgia, North Carolina, and Florida will also join that safe column. Let me just point out that Ohio is at 93% chance, Iowa 93 North Carolina is at 83, Georgia is at 80, and Florida is at 93. So basically, North Carolina and New Jersey are pretty much on par. Very, very surprising. But without further ado, we're going to get into the likely states, which is the 70% chance of going for that party to 80% chance. And let me also just point out that Maine's second congressional district will be going to that safe column. But in Biden's likely column, we're going to have the states of Minnesota, 76 to 24, and the state of Virginia, 73 to 27. So basically, the state of Virginia has a less chance of going for Biden than the state of Georgia has going for Trump, according to the betting odds. And poly market is the biggest betting market for uh, the election, for election cycles. And sometimes they say that betting odds are a lot more accurate than even the polls are because these are thousands and millions of people that are voting for who they think is going to win each state and the presidency. But anyways, we're going to have the states of Minnesota and Virginia going into that uh, likely column for the Democrat Party. And Republicans will be getting the states of Arizona, 72 Nevada also 72 in that likely column. So Nevada and Arizona are pretty much on par with Minnesota and Virginia in terms of that confidence. People really do not have confidence in the Democrats uh, winning any of these states in the southern part of the United States besides, Colo uh, besides Colorado, New Mexico, and Virginia, which is pretty surprising, but it is what we have been expecting. I, you know, the polls have been saying the exact same thing. And it appears the betting markets completely agree with that metric as well. But now going into that lean column, and I actually forgot to put New Mexico in that likely, sorry, in that save column. My bad. New Mexico will actually go into that save column, 81 to 19, and it will, it will be there with Colorado, but almost on that verge of going to the likely column. But anyways, now going next to the lean column for Democrats, they will have Nebraska's second congressional district, the state of New Hampshire, and the state of Maine. Nebraska's second is at 64% chance for Biden. New Hampshire is at 69, and Maine is at 64. So these three will all be going in that lean column for Biden. And all the states here that are going to be lean and tilt you know, they still favor that candidate, but it's a lot closer, like 64 to 36. It is still possible for that upset. And it is surprising that Donald Trump is even performing this well in the state of Maine. And the same thing with New Hampshire and Nebraska second. However, Nebraska second, I feel like a lot of people are much more confident than usual that the Democrats will once again win that district. But going into Trump's lean states, there will actually be none since he already has all these states here secured in that likely column, the three remaining states will be going into the tilt column between 50, around 50 to 60% chance of going for that candidate. Wisconsin will be the strongest one for Trump, 55 to 45. And if we remember, but right before the debate, Biden was once leading 53 to 47 for the Democrats. So this state will be going into that tilt column in Trump's column, and that will secure him the election. But we still have two states left. We have the states of Michigan and the state of Pennsylvania. Next up in the state of Michigan, Trump has a narrow lead of 52 to 48. And it is also a state that just a few days ago, Biden was leading 53 to 47. So once again, a flip in Trump's column and one that solidifies almost the entire states of the Rust Belt with the addition of Pennsylvania, another state that Biden had a narrow lead in that has finally now, after this debate, flipped to Trump 54% to 46, and that will secure the election for Donald Trump. And this is exactly what my presidential election prediction was in that last video I made for it. And I had, do have a 312 to 226 map, and this is exactly what the people agree with me. A lot more confident on states like Arizona, Nevada, Georgia, and North Carolina. Less confident on Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. Democrats seem to be faltering a lot in New Hampshire, 
Maine at large, and Nebraska second, and Minnesota and Virginia are next up on that list. That seem to be a little bit shaky, but still, you know, I people think Democrats still have a two to third chance of winning those states. And this is very interesting. This is very telling on this map because especially that Donald Trump is at 312 and we still have four months left around. So we're going to see what happens. Uh, there has been a lot of trouble with Joe Biden and that debate performance. But this video is going to cover the map after the debate and what people reacted. And you can check out my previous video covering my full reaction to the debate. But this is going to be the map. And just for reference to compare the legitimacy of this, Predicted does show a similar story where Trump is pretty heavily favored, 58 cents to 35, and he has taken a pretty considerable lead. And this is just another uh, election predicting market. And then we have the polls as usual. Trump is up by almost 2%. He has led uh, around five out of the past six. So it is pretty evident that Trump does have that uh, advantage. We can see here, uh, Republicans do have the advantage in the congressional vote. Biden's approval rating has absolutely tanked. Direction of the country, negative 40. And the margins in every swing state is pretty favorable to Donald Trump. In the five-way race, we can see the same thing where Trump has a three-point lead. And we're going to see now with a lot more polls that come out what exactly is going to come out of this. And it's going to be pretty evident, you know, who is really going to take the lead after this. Because this is only, this is, you know, what right now we can base our prediction off of. We did have a few polls that came out. Morning Consul did come out and give Biden a one-point lead uh, over uh, Trump. And then, but the other one uh, by Survey USA had Trump up by two that came out right after the debate as well. And then we had another one that had Trump up by eight that is not included on, on Real Clear Politics, but it is included on other sites that you can check out. But anyways, guys, this will do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I'll check you guys out in the next one.